Hi, I'm Regina. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you several projects I've made for my home, starting with this picture frame. I found this on Amazon. They came in a two-pack and there was multiple sizes. I've seen this method done on an actual vintage window with these transfers, but what I'm going to do is take a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cover it with a piece of regular painter's drop cloth. So what I do is take the drop cloth and I cut it to size. Then I don't actually show it here, but I do iron it out just a little bit. Once I get it ironed out, I start to glue it down to my foam board on all sides. Once I get it all glued down nice and tight, I flip it over and attach it with some staples. I just used my staple gun, but you could certainly just use hot glue. That would work as well. Now I'm going to flip this over and pull out my transfers. The great thing about these transfers is it's a really large piece, but you can cut them down to size. You can choose which pieces you'd like to use and where. You don't have to use the whole thing at once. You can definitely break it up into several projects, which is what I'm doing here. I just cut out the pieces that I wanted and laid it out where I thought it would look best. Then I just taped it down with a piece of masking tape just to secure it so it doesn't move around too much when I'm rubbing the transfer. You can just remove the carrier sheet from underneath and you'll see here, I kind of put it around the window frame, which is not what I do at the top. Here, I was afraid I was going to lose a lot of the design, but I didn't, and it turned out okay. So once I get that all rubbed down, I take a piece of the transfer paper and just kind of burnish it down so it doesn't start to peel up. And after that, I move on to the next piece. Now this piece, I got a little smarter. I cut it and slightly tucked it underneath of the frame and then rubbed it down and burnished it as well so that I still kept the design, but it looked like it was hidden underneath. I did the same for the top flowers, sliding the scissors up and accidentally cut a piece of the rose or it started to fold over on itself so what i did was i just kind of made it so it would tuck over the sides just a little bit but i still cut the design in a way that it could too tuck underneath of the frame and then that way i wasn't losing the design as i cut a piece for the center and put that on top so i could still see the whole thing so I finish getting it transferred on and take the carrier sheet and burnish that down as well. And honestly, it looks great. You can't really see any of the imperfections and it's absolutely gorgeous in its new space. Please stick around to the end so you can see how I styled everything together. It's absolutely gorgeous. Also consider subscribing to my channel if you like what you're seeing. I have more to come. Okay. Are little birds so I found these cute little birds at Dollar General and I thought obviously not my style but they had great texture and they're gonna be really pretty painted each of them were only a dollar which is a great buy and if you see something that you like whether it's at the thrift store or at the dollar store definitely pick it up because you can make it into something your own as you see here, I think I'm petting the nice little birdie, not really sure. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to give the first little bird two coats of Waverly chalk paint and ballet slipper. So I'm just trying to take my time and make sure that I get into all of his nooks and crannies. Um, these two birds were actually like concrete and the other two are definitely resin. Once I get his first coat on, I'm going to let him sit for a little bit to dry. Then I'm going to move on to our next bird and I'm going to use Waverly chalk paint and ivory. Again, I'm taking my time to make sure I get into all those little nooks and crannies and make sure he too gets a nice base coat. After I give both the base coats, I do go back in and give a second lighter coat just to make sure that you can't see any of the really bright colors poking through. And obviously these little baby birds are so much prettier already. Now it's time to work on our little birds. 
First, I'm going to take the little blue bird and I'm going to paint him in white Adirondack. I'm paying close attention to make sure I get underneath all of his feathers. Once I get a good coat on him, then I'm going to switch to our little cardinal. Our cardinal I'm going to paint in Waverly Chalk Paints Elephant Gray. Once I get him finished, I let them dry and then give them a second coat. Now I'm going to take some finishing wax by Jolie in white, and I'm going to white wax all of the birds. Yes, even the lighter colored birds. And that's because the lighter color birds are going to get waxed with dark wax. And I'm super afraid of the dark wax. I'm always nervous that I'm going to make it way too dark. And what this allows me to do is to wipe it back. And when I wipe it back, the white mixes in with the dark and therefore doesn't let it get too much darker than what I really want. Now I'm just going to continue to build the wax on the lighter colored bird until you can see all of the little details in his feathers. If you wipe it back and still are not happy with it, you can definitely go in and dip your brush back in the wax and then reapply until you're satisfied with the way he looks. Now we're going to do the same with the little birds. We'll take our white wax and make sure that we're paying attention to all of the fine details in their feathers. After I get both of them done with a nice coat, I'm going to start dipping into the dark wax. At first I'm being very light handed and then I decide, oh shoot, just go for it. And I start pushing it down into his little feathers. He looks a hot mess. I'm definitely going for an aged look. I just don't want him to look super grungy. So I am pleasantly surprised when I start to wipe it back that he's not as dark as I thought he would be, even with the white wax. So then I go back and I wipe a little bit more and I decide I want to brighten him up just a little bit more. So I take the white wax and I just go ahead and, and just cover over top of the dark wax that I just did and then wipe him back again. And I think he looks great. Now I repeat the steps for the big bird and I do the exact same thing. I push the wax into his all, all of his little details. I wipe him back. I go in with the white wax and done. I think all of our little bird friends turned out great. So stick around till the end so you can see how I styled them together. Okay, this project here. What I did was I took a Dollar Tree bamboo cutting board and some beads. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little riser. Now, to say that this craft almost didn't make the video is an understatement. After I get our beads glued on for the feet of the little riser, I do two coats of the Ballet Slipper Waverly Chalk Paint. Now I'm just taking some white chalk paint and I'm going in and I'm dry brushing it. And immediately I know this is not the look I'm going for at all. I decide to push forward, still not liking it, thinking I'm going to take a sanding block, do a little sanding, um, and still I end up and I'm just, well, you can see my frustration. After sleeping on it, I decided that I was gonna kick it up a notch. So I took IOD's trimmings molding, um, it's the trimmings one, and decided that I was gonna put some trim around this to make it a little more high-end looking. So what I did was I took my air dry clay and this is actually the air dry clay from IOD. So I added some cornstarch to the mold to help it release easier and I used IOD's air dry clay to press into the mold. As you can see it releases like butter. And then I take some quick and thick by tight bond and I put a nice layer on the mold I wipe it back a little so I make sure I don't have any goopy spots dripping or anything and I attach it to the side of my riser. Now I'm going to continue to repeat the steps, put cornstarch in my mold and press the air dry clay in to release more. Here's the IOD clay that I've been using and I continue to build the pieces and glue them on as I go.
When you're joining the pieces, you want to make sure that you're massaging them together where the ends meet because what's going to happen is, is as the clay dries, it will start to separate a little bit if you don't have those connected well. Okay, so here's where it took a wrong turn again. I had some bad paint and I started to paint it and it was coming out like stain. So what I had to do was I let that dry and I tried to wipe it back as much as I could, let it dry, and then I came back in with Waverly chalk paint and Elephant. I got into all of the details around the sides um, and on the bottom feet of the riser and then gave it two good coats on top. After the trouble it gave me, I really wasn't sure if I still was going to include this, but here I am plugging along. So once it's dry, I decide to take some white wax and I wax into all of those really awesome details. I continue to go all the way around the riser, making sure I get the feet, making sure that I'm getting all of the details, and then I finish up with going over the top. Once the top is done, I go in with my paper towel and I wipe it back. And honestly, I have to say, it didn't turn out as bad as I thought it would. Okay, so now we're gonna take this old frame, some transfers by, I think they're Timeless Designs transfers and this wooden oval from the Dollar Tree. And I take my antiquing wax and I mix it with some water to create a stain so that I can stain the wood. And this wood is going to be the base of our project. I don't think you needed the water. I think next time I'm just gonna try using the antique stain itself. If you like what you see so far, give me a thumbs up and let me know. And please leave a comment below and let me know if there is anything you'd do different or if you have any tricks to share with me. I will super appreciate it and definitely respond to all of your comments. Once I get him finished and wipe it back, I start on the picture frame. So I remove the stand because we're not gonna need that. And then I take the back of the frame out and remove the glass. You'll want to clean the glass prior to putting it back in. I take a little bit of hot glue to each of the corners and then I'm going to put the glass back in. I want to do this so that the glass doesn't move around when I go to put the paint on. So now I'm going to cover it in two coats of Waverly chalk paint and ivory. And you're going to want to let that dry really well, probably overnight. Okay, now that it's nice and dry, I'm going to take my white wax by Jolie and I'm going to white wax the entire frame because I'm going to again put some antiquing wax to tie these crafts in together. Once I'm satisfied it's covered, I'm going to go in with my antiquing wax and I'm just going to rub it in to the corners and around the frame, just aging spots that would be typical of age. Once that's done, I rub it back until my eyes are happy and then I start on the base. What I do first is I go in with a little bit of the white wax and then I feel like it needs something darker. So I take my dark wax and I start to brush that on and wipe it back until I'm happy. Now that I have that wax on there, this is where I wanna put the transfer so I'm putting a nice thin layer of Mod Podge over top of it and letting that dry so hopefully the transfer will not pull up my paint. Now I'm going to take the Memories of Paris transfer by Timeless Transfers and I'm going to just decide which pieces I want to use. The great thing about these transfers is you can mix and match, you can cut them up, you decide what you want to use and where. So now I'm going to transfer these down and I found that the stick, I was having a problem with the stick so I even go in with the plastic scraper that I have there on the side to try to get it to stick down without pulling up the paint. And you can see here that I'm doing just that. I'm cutting the pieces that I want and just kind of building it together. And you really can't tell where I cut it and where I didn't. 
So now I go through and after I get my pieces laid out and all of the other pieces that I want to add in, I transfer them all down and then I take a piece of the carrier sheet and burnish it um, just to make sure that it's all adhering. I'm being really gentle because I didn't want to pull that paint off. So now I'm taking the picture frame and I want to attach it to the base. So I'm putting again some thick and quick tight bond plus some hot glue and putting that down. Now what I'm doing is taking the Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree because we need to add some stability. So I'm putting some quick and thick on them plus some hot glue and I'm putting them three across. Then I'm going to take some more wooden blocks, add some more glue and some more hot glue, and I'm going to place them on top of these blocks. And this provides the perfect amount of stability. Once it's dry, there's no issues with it standing on its own, and this was the perfect add to make sure. Now there's other things that you could use definitely to make sure your piece is stable, but I thought this was an inexpensive way to do so. Now I'm gonna take some moss, Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to ball it up and make a little bird's nest. So I'm going to take the bird's nest and glue it to the front of our base. Once I get it glued down, I go looking for some eggs. I came across this little teeny bird's nest that I had in my stash, which I could have just used this. But instead, I decided to pull the eggs out and rekindle them and put them inside my new bird's nest. Now I know I want to add a very shabby, messy bow. So I take some seam binding, some Dollar Tree uh, lace, some muslin, some other ribbons, and I start to build the base for my bow. I cut a piece into my muslin and then just rip it. That way I have the frayed edges and the shabby chic look I'm going for. After that, I just continue to cut pieces and layer them until I'm happy with the thickness of my bow. And as you can see, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's why this bow is so easy to make. You're just basically taking scraps and putting in a pile and then tying a nice tight, tight knot. Once I get that tied, I'm going to take a look at it and decide what I think it needs. So I'm thinking some of the pieces are a little long or they're not as shabby as I'd like them to be. So I just go in with a pair of scissors and I give them a haircut. Once I'm so happy with the way that it turned out and oh my goodness, I'm loving it, I go ahead and glue the bow to the top of the frame and that is it. Wait until you see it at the end. Okay, I'm not even sure if we can consider this a DIY. However, I needed some greenery on my little vignette that I'm putting together in my bedroom. So what I did was I took these planters, I believe they came in a three pack from Amazon, and also take this stamp from my IOD Birds and Bees stamp and cut him out. I ink him up, place him where I want, hold him down with one hand and using the other hand to press so that I don't get any smudges. And now it's time. Look how pretty everything looks. I love it. Do you guys love it too? Let me know below. Please subscribe if this is something that you'd be interested in seeing more of. I absolutely had a really good time making all of these things and I just think they turned out great. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.